Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Sea Star League uh, Spring Hearthstone season. This is week three, and tonight we feature four schools in action. First up, we're going to have Maryville versus Robert Morris. Um, should definitely be an intense matchup there. Once again, I am Nomo Dogan, and casting with me tonight will be Bert Bird. Um, how are you, how are you doing tonight, Bert? I'm doing great, and it's an amazing time to be kind of back in CSL. I did some casting with them in League of Legends, but, uh, here to do some Hearthstone with y'all, so it's gonna be pretty fun. Uh, if you don't know me, I do HSL, the high school story league, uh, as the, one of the main commentators for that. So, it's gonna be really fun to see some new talent in the collegiate scene kind of rock it out. And, uh... Nomadorian did mention the first game coming up, which is RMU versus Maryville. Next game after that is going to be a battle between Georgia schools. It's Georgia versus Georgia Tech, so it's going to be pretty fun. How are you doing, Nomadogan? I'm doing very well, thank you for asking. Um, yeah, definitely excited for these matchups we've got tonight. There's the, the Georgia rivalry going on, and uh, yeah, but that's that's for the second match. Um, first up, Maryville, Maryville versus Robert Morris should... Should be really exciting. Uh, we've got some notable players on both of these teams, and uh, looks like we are about ready to get started, as I think the players have gotten in game. Uh, I think so. Uh, it looks like one of our players is actually in, but I don't think that we're quite ready yet. So uh, we'll, we'll go back on this in a little bit. Sorry about that, guys. A little false start. Um, but yeah, it's going to be an interesting matchup. Both teams right now are 2-0 and in this season, and they're looking to capitalize off of that. So we'll see which one will stay undefeated and which one will kind of go down from there. Yeah, uh, another thing I would like to mention right now is we would like to thank our sponsors, Twitch and Asus ROG, of course, for making this all possible. And um, also, towards the end of the season, Asus ROG will be funding the travel to DreamHack Austin for the people who make it to the top of the standings throughout this season. So, I mean, these schools are both 2-0 so far, so one of these guys could possibly making the, be making the trip out there. Um, yeah, it should definitely be exciting to yep. see. Definitely going to be fun to see who will actually come up and rise above all the challengers to uh, get to DreamHack and well, win out some really cool scholarship money. Uh, we'll see if it's going to be one of these teams. I mean, RMU... They boast a pretty good school about esports. If you didn't know already, they have a big League of Legends division. They have uh, well, Hearthstone as well. So hopefully they can keep up that tradition of uh, maybe making it big. But we'll see if um, Maryville has something to say about that. Um, other than that, though, I mean, what do you think? Have you seen any play from any of these uh, teams yet to this year? Um, yeah, we actually did see RMU earlier this season. Mm -hmm. uh, Zerk, I don't think he played, but I remember the rest of these names. Um, they played a few different decks like Demon Zoo, Freeze Mage, Patron Warrior, Secret Paladin, a lot of standard decks. Okay. Um, Maryville, I don't think we've seen this season, but uh, you know, I definitely expect some changes up from the school. Uh, about what decks they play. As we do know, this format is best of five. Uh, once a class is played for your school, that class can no longer be played. Uh, so let's say a school plays Warrior for their first game, then that means in their the rest of the match, in their games, they can't play Warrior anymore. Whether or not it wins or lose, uh, it doesn't matter. So, yep, once a class is played, you can't play it anymore. Uh, it is a bit different from the actual Conquest format, so... Then again, we'll see what will work out from each other. As we are still setting up to get in the game. Uh, special thanks and shout out to Twitch. I mean, Twitch is the biggest stream platform, or the largest gaming stream platform in the world. Big thanks to them for sponsoring CSL for featuring our weekly show matches. And also, uh, I think we, I think we did, did we do a plug for Aces? I don't, don't remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I did mention them a little bit, but. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely good to keep thanking them. Like, <laughs> like they, they've done a lot of good stuff for this broadcast. Uh, so yeah, the players are getting each other added and deciding what decks they want to play and stuff like that. We will have it ready to go shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, I would expect to see some Druid. I mean, I'm a big fan of opening with Druid uh, in tournaments because it can beat anything. Yeah. 
uh, relatively easily as long as you get a decent hand. And it doesn't have any matchups that you're super afraid of, I think. Maybe Secret Paladin is one of the one of the ones you really don't want to see. But uh, if you can avoid that matchup, maybe run into a Warrior or a Freeze Mage or something. I guess Patron Warrior can also be kind of difficult for Druid, though. Yeah. Uh, depending on what happens there, but... Can't really clear a patron board with swipe and then create more patrons on patrons. It's it's, yeah. it's tough. It's very tough. For you. That is that is a true thing. Um, I mean, Firebat, the first winner of BlizzCon, did pilot Drew it pretty well, albeit he was kind of lucky throughout the whole series. I would say Drew it is always a stable standard. I mean. I guess Tinker Row would be a good one to start off with. Uh, I mean, there hasn't been a lot of play in the latter per se, but I'm pretty sure Tinker Rogue still kind of exists somewhat in, yeah. in the tournament meta. Yeah, I agree. I think, especially for a rogue expert, that deck can get a lot of work done. For mm -hmm. someone who doesn't really uh, play rogue a ton or hasn't gone to high legend with it, I think it can be very difficult because I do think rogue decks are, are quite skill intensive. Very mechanical uh, and has a V8, right? right? Yeah, you got to know like all the different interactions, how to use your cards uh, really effectively, and how to stay in the game without losing too much tempo. Because often Rogue can struggle with those kind of things. Uh, just just maintaining their their board presence and keeping their opponent's board presence down. But if you do get the game locked down and you get into your late game with a couple minions on board, it can usually be pretty easy to close it out with uh, some burst. Yep. And uh, we'll see if these challengers will kind of make it up. First docket of the match, or the first uh, people actually going to be playing out for the match, is going to be Zerk versus Mr. Misker. So we'll see if they want to start up. Uh, we do have Agent Q52 and, wow, uh, Stachastikos. Yes, <laughs> Stachastikos. Yeah, something like that. Uh, <laughs> apologies to the player for butchering his name. But. <laughs> We love you. I mean, heart all the time for CSL. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what will happen pretty soon. At least there's two players that will be going on. I'm hoping, I'm kind of hoping that it is going to be a, a best of five series and all the way through the fifth game. But, you know, it could end up in a 3 0. We never know. Yeah, we you... have seen a couple of clean, clean sweeps uh, this season so far on the broadcast. So. Mm -hmm. But then again, we've also seen. A uh, few games that get to four games. I don't think we've seen a best of five uh, complete yet, mm. but best of four, kind of. Uh, we've seen a few of those. So, all right. Seems like the players are in game now. We are going to have Zerk versus Mr. Me Seeks. Uh, let's see what decks they've brought to the table. It's gonna be. It looks like it's gonna be Hunter versus Mage. So I'm gonna look to open off to that. And uh, we see, what do we see out of Mr. Meesker? That's an interesting hand. On the other hand, it looks like Face Hunter coming out from Zerk. Yeah, this actually looks like the aggro freeze variant um, <laughs> of Freeze Mage. I mean, oh. there's an Arcane Golem right here and a mm. Frost Nova. So I think that makes it pretty clear that this is like the Leroy Freeze Mage deck where you just... You play a lot of burn spells, you have a little bit of early game cycle, and then you have freeze cards and secrets to prevent your opponent from killing you while you finish them off. So I think it's a great counter to Hunter decks uh, because you push through a lot of your own damage while also having some defensive cards and being able to stall them. So it's like it's like normal freeze mage, but you have a faster clock yeah. usually. Uh, I think it was kind of not mentioned, but popularized in the Chinese region. I mean, albeit there was like Mad Bombers and other things that were added in, which was really crazy. But I like what Mr. Meeksgers is going with. It's a good counter, I guess. So both teams kind of working out. We do have Army on the bottom side with uh, Zerk. On the other hand, Maryville on the top side, kind of rocking it out. Again, best of five format, so we'll rock it in for CSL and just, well, a little Leopard Gnome-ish. But it is going to be a really interesting startup right now. With Mr. Musker is not going to have that aggressive hand that we saw in the beginning. Going to be more standard into Freeze Mage. Yeah, Sorcerer's Apprentice, I would say, is the only odd thing out here from you know a, a normal Freeze Mage list. Mm -hmm. uh, commenting on Zerk's side, uh, that Lepronome, I'd say, is a pretty solid draw. If there's any turn you want to have your Lepronome, turn one is definitely it. It'll allow him to save the coin for 
something better later on next turn. Maybe he could just play a Haunted Creeper or a Mad Scientist. Um, but we're going to see the Fire Blast here from Mr. Me Seeks. Just take out that Leper Gnome. Doesn't really uh, get anything on the board, but he does take care of his opponent's board. Takes two damage in the process, but that's that's all right. Yeah, I will see it kind of go into uh, fast mode in just a second. Zerk, he has a lot of uh, low-cost minions, per se, and he could develop a Mad Scientist, could develop a Haunted Creeper. Probably just want to go a little bit more face. I mean, if it was a Tempo Mage, might have had a different turn, one turn two, but it, it, it'll be kind of foretool or foretelling. Per se, with this next play, if Mr. Meesters does put down the uh, Acolyte of Pain. Yeah, I think it makes sense to play Acolyte here. You've got three mana, your opponent has a two attack minion on the board. Mm -hmm. So usually playing Acolyte into that scenario is pretty good because it'll often cycle for two, maybe kill the minion. But Eaglehorn Bow drawn for Zerk. I, I expect him to see. I expect to uh, take that out. Never lucky. <laughs> I mean, it's not the worst, like, mm -hmm. it's not damage going to your face, but you are only getting one draw. Um, so there's that. Wow, a lot of burn and two sources of apprentices. Uh, yeah, could potentially play all that burn right now if you wanted to. <laughs> you might just go straight. Oh, he is going to go straight face. Oh, Mr. Meesters. You're yeah, showing you your hand a little early, but dang, you're going to put the burn down. He's saving a lot of mana, though. I mean,. It's like it's like he just played two innervates uh, with these with these sources apprentices. That would have normally cost four mana to play all these cards, but mm. yeah, I mean, I think it's fine to get that damage out there. You're confident in this matchup. You know what your game plan is. I think Mr. Me Seeks is showing that he knows what his plan is, and he's gonna stick to it by just burning his opponent for for uh, eleven damage right off the bat. Always face, never replace. And we're gonna see the other hand. We're gonna have to have some trading coming up from the face hunter, so that's gonna be a pretty good advantage for uh, Mr. Meesters, like we said. Albeit the follow up right now for Mr. Meesters, he has to kind of recur. Gonna have to cycle out some things with the loot hoarder, but Forgotten Torch on top of that. Man, it's not a good day to be a hunter right now. Yeah, you don't wanna be trading. That's for sure. Uh, you don't want to be trading when you are the, the face deck, but mm -hmm. both of these decks are face decks. I mean, we've seen Arcane Golems in both of the lists. Uh, maybe Mr. Meeseek's uh, mm -hmm. mage deck is a little bit slower, a little bit less minion-centric, more spell-based uh, when it comes to damage. But uh, we'll see what he decides to do this turn. Could either play... Yeah, he's actually got a lot of options. He's going to go with uh, Ping into Loot Hoarder, it looks like. He could Forgotten Torch the Mad Scientist if you want to prevent some damage and get the Roaring Torch in his deck. So it goes with the Loot Hoarder instead. That can trade with the Mad Scientist as long as there isn't any uh, Freezing Trap up for Zerk. And that's not really something you want to kill with an Eaglehorn Bow, so I think the Loot Hoarder is a fine play. Yeah, it's probably going to be traded right into the Mad Scientist, like you said. And I see a Misha come out. So that's actually probably not the best of plans for Zerk at that point. Could develop a Iron Beak Owl to deny a draw. I mean, your opponent's at two cards. You kind of don't want them to draw, but knowing that he's a face mage instead of something else, it, it could be kind of non void. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Goes with a ping for two instead. I guess he just wants to keep the clock fast. Mm -hmm. uh, denying the draw is definitely worth considering. Maybe he's afraid of a Doomsayer combo. Uh, although I don't think these mage decks play Doomsayer. Maybe there's... Uh, maybe one, if anything, for me. Yeah, six. It's, it's possible. Right. Don't want to write it off just yet. Right. And, uh, well, Fireball... Forgotten Torch, Forgotten Torch, probably use the plus the ping. So it's gonna be really interesting what Zerk's gonna do from out of here. I think he's just playing off the clock and he is probably about six to three turns, so it's gonna be a bit of a problem for Zerk if he can't really take care of the pressure of the board. He really needs to develop something, correct? So that's the biggest yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah, I would like to see the loot hoarder trade here though, because Yeah, you get the cycle. Um, wow, no secret gone for Zerk, so I guess he's only got explosive traps in here. Mm -hmm. um, a 
as far as his secret suite, what a spell swinger, spell slinger drawn for Mr. Meeseeks now. That's an interesting choice. I don't know how many people have played that in this deck, but I so, guess, yeah, I mean, I guess when you're trying to be aggressive like this mm -hmm. and you put your opponent behind with like life totals, if you have your opponent lower than you are, um, there's just a lot more good situations for spell slinger for you. Uh, and a lot of your cards are cheap. You can empty your hand pretty quickly. So, I'm thinking for this like whole deck construction of the mage. I'm gonna put Acolyte of Pain and Spell Slinger, Tepin Mage and Freeze Mage kind of together, and then add this aggro stuff. It's really interesting in the sense that holy crap, there's a plethora of like RNG that's really been coming in from me six. But oh my, it's it's kind of working now in the end. I don't think Spell. Well, would you play Spell Slinger on this one? Just curve out correctly or just go face? It's a tough call. Um, I think you might need to play Spell Slinger, though, because you're behind in damage now. You've got to deal with this Arcane Golem. You don't really want to fireball it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think Mr. Meeseeks recognizes that he's on the back foot now. I would like to see the, the Spell Slinger come out first just to find some more options. Wanted. And then you can also play the Mad Scientist and Loot Hoarder. Or Kanan alike, not too bad. Fan and I've picked up for Zerk. So I would say Mr. Meeseeks got the got the better end of this deal. But our Kanan elect is a bit slow and he's dying really quickly. So will he have the time to use these cards before he dies off? Polymorph Boar! Wow, lots of interesting choices here in Mr. Meeseeks deck. I like it though. I like yeah. having the, the cards that are you know, like, people wouldn't normally think you have, as you see, a South Sea deckhand drawn for Zerk. Um, yeah, both these players bring some new and interesting card choices, which, you know, it's it's nice to see something different. I mean, the decks are pretty similar to things we've seen, but yeah, some of the card choices are definitely different. Innovation at its finest, coming out from both Army and Maryville. Let's see... Uh, probably something else could be developed. Quickshot could be used for some draw. Did you see a trade? Job's done. Okay, no. <laughs> Straight face <laughs> coming out from Zerk. And uh, Me6 is in so much trouble, but just saw that he did draw off the ice block. That's going to save him out a little bit of time. Will it be enough, though? Yeah, he's going to have to draw a lot of burn. As we know, he already used a Frost Bolt and two Ice Lances. Mm -hmm. So, man, drawing lethal next turn seems like it would be really difficult. Uh, he could... Ice block and trade the mad scientist into the arcane golem, as well as attack with the spell slinger, get some damage up, and maybe he draws the second fireball next turn, uh, and he could ping his opponent. Could also mm. draw the roaring torch. The oh yeah, roaring too. torch. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would go with that play definitely. At least trading out, saving some damage. He still needs a little bit more for lethal after the arcane golem, but it's. It's, it's still a really tough climb for me 6 onto this one. He's thinking about it, he's taking a little bit of time. Actually going to be playing out the Mana Worm instead and the Ice Block. So he's just going to go straight broke, uh, go for broke and hopefully it'll work out. Ugh, tough time and extra damage on the uh, Mana Worm. Yeah. Yeah, I think maybe... Hmm. Actually, he's just going to go straight to face. <laughs> Does he get the attack out in time? No, oh, he doesn't! No. He didn't attack. Wow, he would have had his opponent at 10. He also didn't get the ping. Oh. Man, if he draws the second fireball this turn, that's going to be that's going to be really rough. Um opponent would be at 10 health right over there as well. Ah, oh, what a heartbreak. Me6, I mean, hopefully you draw into the blank. Oh, we don't want to see that, but Yeah. Uh. Either frostbolt or fireball. It's going to be like, well, like I would have won, you know, if I didn't run out of time, but man, in some of these situations, mm -hmm. Uh, like you're on the clock, you got like you're being spectated. You know you're in a tournament and you're trying to win this game for your team. There's a lot of pressure. It's easy to miss some things, and it's very easy to rope out and just miss some some things you wanted to get done in your turn. I definitely know that feeling. I've been in tournaments and missed some important things and lost games because of it. So totally agree. I've seen. I think when they did some team play with some of the collegiate scene over to Tespa, it kind of worked out the same way. You know, it's, people just miss their opportunity in shot just because, you know, you're getting spectated, you're so, you have so much pressure on you for this win, and unfortunately, yeah. well, it's still for not per se, for music, as he does draw into the second Man of Worm.
Well, technically, he could loot hoarder, ping it, draw a frost bolt. Okay, never mind. That would still be nine damage, so yeah. it still wouldn't be enough. <laughs> Alright, just checking out what his next draw was. I think Mr. Meeseeks would have lost this game <laughs> either way, so I guess that's a nice feeling, but then again, uh, it's not a nice feeling to lose. So that will be Zerk taking game one for RMU. And um, yeah, as we mentioned, the classes that were played, uh, Hunter for RMU is going to be out of the equation, and Mage for Maryvale is going to be out of the equation now. Alright. Uh... So it'll be interesting to see what's going to be coming up next. I, I hope there's no mirror matches, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a Paladin versus Paladin next. And be the boringest match of Secret Paladin versus Secret Paladin. But if it is something like that, that'd be kind of crazy. But what do you think, Nim Dogen? What are we going to do for game number two? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Paladin versus Druid or Paladin versus Paladin. I mean, <laughs> some combination of those two classes just because they're both so Same. good right now. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Patron Warrior, though, because Patron Warrior is a solid counter to Paladin. It's not 100%, but I think it does win the matchup most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's also pretty good against Druid. Um, so we are going to get this next matchup set up in just a moment. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah, so again, big, big shout out to our sponsors, Aesis Rogue. They put on some pretty cool prep referrals, but they are the presenting sponsor for CSL this year, so it's really thanks to them for all the funding for the season's travel to DreamHack and our prize pool. There's just so many good things coming out for them, so uh, shout out to them. Follow them on, uh, on Twitter at Aces underscore Rogue. Uh, and thank them for sponsoring the CSL. And also, thank our Twitter, twitter.com slash CSL Hearthstone. It's a sort of new Twitter that they're trying to, we're trying to grow right now, so uh, hit it up if you can. Give it a follow, give it a like, uh, give us some feedback as well for myself, uh, L3RD, and Nemedogen. Root Nemedogen, if I correctly remember correctly? Yeah, yeah, yeah so. Root Nemedogen. <laughs> yeah, give us some feedback if you guys do like the cast, if you think we're just resident sleepers or rank 25 uh, casters, you know, the usual. <laughs> Okay, uh, I don't know if we're ready. Post the I think the players are in the, the challenge screen just mm -hmm. deciding what decks they want to play. So yeah, Paladin versus Druid, that's a kind of safe thing. Warrior, you've been saying. If uh, the decks are very aggressive, Warrior would be a really good counter to that. So we saw that in yeah. the first game. We'll see what will happen in the second game as we're about to get in the game. Alright, so neither of the classes I mentioned is actually Warrior versus Shaman, but then again, this Burn Shaman deck is definitely another deck that's on top of the meta. Uh, but I think Warrior is exactly what you want to put against that uh, mm -hmm. as Agent Q52. Is it though? I, I've seen a lot of Warriors get burned up before turn 5 or turn 6 uh, yeah. through Shaman. And especially with this hand that we just see right now from the Warrior, it's going to be tough. Yeah, that is a rough hand, and it also looks like Patron Warrior, which is definitely worse off against the Burn deck than Control Warrior is. Mm -hmm. So I agree, this is going to be an uphill battle for Agent Q52. Let's see how it'll work out. That is probably the worst mulligan that we can see, but Agent Q52 is gonna wait Job for a little done. while. On the other hand, uh, Stoke. We're just gonna call you Stoke, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, had a pretty good starting hand from the first hand, and then he mulliganed everything away. Now it's a little clunky out for the shaman right now. Yeah, I didn't see, I don't think he had a tunnel trog, or else he would have kept that mm -hmm. for sure, I'm pretty sure, but he okay, had, there's uh, a tunnel trog. He had sort of friendly Merlin, but that's about oh, yeah. it. Though. Yeah, I guess that's not really something you want to play in turn one, you would rather have tunnel trog, uh, just something more aggressive. Mm -hmm. But three things are already in play, and Unstable Ghoul is going to help against this pressure. Ooh, but the counter draw with the Feral Spirit. That's going to be pretty good setup for the next turn. But everything's looking like it's going to work out for a little bit. Stoke didn't really have his uh, burst out come out from the beginning, but he does have Feral Spirit and some wolves to protect this tunnel truck. So good starts for both teams. Uh, players in the sense that Agent Q52 now can develop everything that he wanted to develop. 
Yeah, this way you don't get the the execute on the tunnel shrog, but you can do that next turn. You want to get the death spite up, use your mana efficiently. And uh, we're going to see a coin lava burst now from Stoke. Uh, I can definitely respect this play. I mean, you've got a lot of damage being pushed through. You want to make use of that tunnel trog while you have it, so. Yeah, I mean, and hopefully you draw into a Doom Hammer pretty soon. You've got the Rock Biter to go with it. Yeah, I think this is the correct line to go uh, from Stoke's point of view. In some ways, I kind of wanted Agent Q52 to be more greedy on this play. Grim Patron probably would have been the secondary choice I would have said. Just because he is on two mana overloaded, so he has three mana to play with. And there isn't possibly any way to lose from 9 health, possibly from a Crackle but and a uh, Rockbite weapon. But it's very limited that there is 9 damage of reach on 3 mana. Yeah, I agree. It, it would have been really unlikely. I guess if a Lava Shock was somewhere in the mix, that would have mm -hmm. helped, but... Yeah, I would have liked to see the Grim Patron as well, because I think right now, the, the play Agent Q52 made was a play to not lose rather than a play to win. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the play to win would have been Grim Patron, but we'll see if this pans out for him. He's still got a good shot here as a Lotheb. Uh, would be a nice thing to have him play and hope your opponent doesn't draw a Doomhammer, because that would probably be the worst possible thing at this point. Yeah, Doomhammer with really Don't nothing else know. to back it up on the hand of Agent Q52. This is going to be a quick one, guys. It's looking like it's going to be a nail biter at the end. Agent Q52 is still thinking about possibly going through our armor up as well, developing the weapon. I think you I think you I can't think pass up yeah, playing yeah, the you minion. You have to here. get some damage on the board to try to face oh, the other face. Yeah. Like, you can try to gain life, but you're going to inevitably die to their burn damage. But this way, you at least get your own damage on the board. And Stoke actually can't do anything. I mean, he can make a totem. But Lotheb doing his job here. Probably the best totem for Agent Q52. He can actually develop Dr. Boom without... Hmm, I'd say without any care, but that's a lot of damage that could still be possibly in the hand of Stoke. Okay, I can respect this, Grim Patron. Uh, your clock should be pretty similar to what it was. Uh, you know, if you play Dr. Boom, mm -hmm. and there's a very real chance you die when the when the Shaman has 7 mana. And 3 uh, cards, plus yeah. Ancestral Knowledge have been coming out. It's looking pretty grim for Stuck in the sense that he isn't drawing into the quality cards that he really needs to keep up the pressure. And if the Knife Trickle does hit the Grim Patron, which it didn't, that's good. That's good. We'll, we'll see if it'll actually pan out. A Stoke can actually control this board and get more damage in. Using the Rock Fighter to take out the Grim Patron, um, I guess it's just a safe line of play. Draws the Warlock Hero Power off of Sir Finley Murgleton. Discovers it, I should say. And that is probably the best one right now. The Hunter one would be fine, but it's more likely you draw more damage uh, off of using this hero power, because a lot of your cards represent three damage straight up, or even more. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's all dependent on the cards, really, because if you do get the hunter hero power, you still have the armor coming up from uh, the warrior hero power, so they would kind of cancel each other out, even though... So you want to cycle out the cards, I do agree with the warlock hero power, like you said. On this turn... There, there's a plethora of choices. You, you go face, or you go gnomish, trade out. I think the fireworks is a lot better though, just because there's two one damage minions per se. But you don't yeah. feel too happy about it per se too. Yeah, you can fireworks, frothing berserker, kill the knife juggler, and kill the tunnel trog. Just <laughs> leave up the Sir Finley. And frothing berserker is nice because over time it'll just turn into an unstoppable monster. Uh, so it's it's a good win condition to have on the board right now. It may also kill out some of the burn coming up from Stoke, so again Stoke. Uh, I'm gonna say his name once, try to Stoke Hastikos. Okay, <laughs> I said it worse than this first time. Um, <laughs> Gotta be close enough, close enough. <laughs> yeah, he could use the Lava Burst X and trade out into the uh, Nimbus, or ooh, Froth and Berserker, Berserker. Mm -hmm. but that'd be a pretty losing play. He did draw into a uh, Arjun Horse Rider, so that could work out, but it's looking tough for the Shaman right now. Yeah, the table seems like it's turning. I mean, when you're looking at the damage in his hand, he actually has lethal if he had the mana. Mm -hmm. uh, he actually does have 10 <laughs> damage, but 
since he can't do it right now, he's got to consider, okay, can my opponent kill me on this turn? You know, a warrior that's going to have four cards in his hand when he has Whirlwind as a possibility with a Broth and Berserker on board, uh, that could potentially be a lot of extra damage. Or maybe Gromash Whirlwind. I guess that's worst case scenario. You don't really want to think about that. Yeah, Gromash Whirlwind would be definitely lethal. I'll kind of... Ooh. Wow. Kind of went past these on actually full committing. It's still not going to get enough damage down. There's going to be a lot more control coming out for uh, Age of 252. And he has a big possibility actually of winning out this game. Alright, the second slam draws oh into an gosh. inner rage. I don't think he's going to be able to lethal. Uh, if he inner rage the frothing berserker, that would put it at 9 attack. He would have 14, 17 damage total, including the firework, so not quite enough. He's going to have to make some trades here. Uh, I think he's... I, I mean, I think you attack face with frothing berserker and inner rage the 2 1. Yeah, and then you just armor up and hope. Sort of hope for the best. sequence that right there, but yeah, um, hope for the best pretty much is what you're going to ask for. He's going to develop another Fire War Axe, so he'll definitely have lethal either way next turn. Did miss one point of damage, but it's okay. Age of 252 has been in brick of destruction this whole time, and it looks like he's going to actually win out with that totem golem being drawn down. Yeah, uh, Stochasticos actually does not have enough mana uh, when it comes to drawing into... Oh, wait a second. Ooh. I was gonna say he doesn't have enough mana for Doomhammer, but Lava Shock into Lava Burst into Rockbiter Weapon, that is. That's totally illegal. He has it. He just Does he not he see it? it? Lava so... Shock unlocks your locked mana crystals, and then he can Rockbiter and Lava Burst. He hasn't attacked at this hero this turn. I think he's double checking. Definitely good to double check when you're <laughs> sure. Okay, he's gonna unlock maximum mana. And he does see the lethal. Oh, man. Oh, to be was... fair, there are a lot of outs for him there. He could have drawn Doomhammer. He could have drawn another spell like Rockbiter for another three. Or actually, he used the other Rockbiter, but he could have drawn a Lightning Bolt. Um, there's there's a lot of ways he would have won that game there. So. Yeah. It's unfortunate for the Warrior with that lose. We are going to be tied up 1-1 one, one into the series. Congrats again going out to Maryville. Tying it up off of a... Really crazily lethal that almost didn't actually happen in the end. So, really good to see both teams kind of calming down. First game again, Maryville kind of had some other ways of playing. Didn't work out. This time, it worked out for Stoke and the rest of the crew. So, we'll see how Army wants to kind of go for the next battle. On the other hand, Maryville, they have to be pretty happy with that win. Yeah, I would say so. I mean... You tied up the series to be down 2-0 feels pretty bad because you have to make like a reverse sweep comeback. But one on one, you're feeling a little bit more solid uh, with where you're at in the match. So, yeah. Once again, I would like to say that uh, the warrior is now been used for RMU. So no warrior, no hunter for them and for uh, Maryville. In the first game, they played. Um, it was it was Hunter versus Mage. So yeah, no Mage for Maryville and no um, Shaman for Maryville. So yeah, they have to decide between the remaining classes on what they want to play in this next game. So we've seen a lot of uh, aggressive decks coming out from Maryville. Do you think maybe a Zoo Hunter could be a possibility as the third kind of pushing match on the other hand Zook, or RMU they played out a warrior so they seemed a little bit more developed at least in their uh, deck choices per se yeah um, I mean I think personally when you see the warrior mm -hmm. um, you feel a lot safer playing something like freeze mage because that's obviously freeze mage's worst matchup I guess druid is also really bad so you want to see both those classes before you play a freeze mage but when you do see both of those classes uh, then you like me personally, I would just love to pull out a freeze mage in a format like this when uh, both those classes are gone. So I guess we might see that soon as Zucchini is playing the Druid now. So maybe in the next game, whoever plays for uh, Maryville might bring out a freeze mage. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, as of now, we see an aggro warrior <laughs> from a wild like, Wigglytuff uh, on the side of Maryville. And Zucchini, representing RMU, is playing Druid. So. 
Yep, it looks like pretty much standard wrap or standard just mid-range druid coming out for a zucchini. I didn't actually see the first part of the mulligan, but yeah, another aggressive deck coming out from Maryville. Surprising to see at the least. Wow, there's some cards I haven't seen for like forever. Yeah, I remember playing a lot of decks with Heroic Strike, uh, maybe a couple years ago, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I like the card. I think it's pretty efficient. The mm -hmm. problem is, you know, you take some damage yourself if you try to kill a minion with it. Mm -hmm. But usually that's fine as a warrior, and especially when you're the aggressor in the matchup. Um, two mana for four damage looks pretty solid. I remember, like, I think the streamer was wreckful, and he, he kind of popularized a face warrior back in the day. I oh, I think that might have actually been Raynad. Oh, Raynad, too. Yeah, I remember Raynad had a really popular face warrior deck, but maybe Wreckflad one too. Oh my. There, there's just so many people who are like, okay, what else can make aggro? And I guess warrior is another thing. As we do see a wild, uh, Wigglytuff could be going up to the face. And then you're like, Zucchini slash RMU. So this is the third aggressive deck that we've seen. What should we do? Yeah, I mean, an Innervate in the hand of Zucchini, I don't really think you want to play that yet. I would much rather use it next turn for Therison, but you see the Wolf Rider get coined out on the side of uh, the Warrior, and you're like, all right, this is aggro. I mean, it's it's got to be obvious, you know, whenever you see a Wolf Rider, but decides to innervate the Azure Drake. Um, I mean, I think this is fine. You get something out earlier, but I would have liked to see it on the Therison because you could hero power the Wolf Rider. Mm -hmm. You play the Therison next turn, and then hopefully it stays alive, or the Warrior just ends up trading into it. Um... But yeah, this is a lot of damage. Wild Wigglytuff packing a punch here with Abusive Sergeant and Heroic Strike taking out that Azure Drake. This is a snap player swipe. Get it out of the way. Um, yeah, this 20 damage on, or 20 health left for Zucchini, the Drake player. And there's more damage coming right out from uh, Wild Wigglytuff. This is just like one of those old zoo matches back in like closed beta where you're just like, oh, well, I can't really play my game efficiently because I'm getting face down. Wow. Yeah, sometimes aggro decks just draw sick curves, but the second Innervate is going to do some work here as I think mm -hmm. we're going to see Innervate Dr. Boom. And if there's any chance at winning this game, Innervate Dr. Boom, or is he going to go with the Ancient of Lore? Ooh. Ancient of Lore heal. Wow. Okay, I mean, he's feeling really scared, but I think Dr. Boom was the play to win there. Right. I think we've seen this twice from Army where they made decisions to play a little bit more safer instead of kind of gambling on trying to be more aggressive. In the second game, it didn't really cost him, but in this game, it's looking like some of these steps kind of work awry for them. And now, if you want to really develop Emperor Thoris, and now you're facing 9 damage on board. Coming out a wild wave. A wild wave. Okay, I think it, it actually is working out okay here because if he didn't play that ancient allure, he would have been at twelve right now. Mm -hmm. He would have died. <laughs> um, so, I, I you know with Therison coming up the next turn, drawing the second ancient allure actually works out really well. To be fair, I don't know if he's gonna win this anyway. I mean, there's there is hope. There's hope for mm -hmm. Zucchini. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got the, the second Ancient Allure, he's got Lothab, he's got a few good options, but a wild Wigglytuff just has so much damage, lots of weapons. Uh, the weapons are just never going to end this game, I mean, the damage is just going to keep coming. And... Yeah, this is 15 right here. <laughs> he's too off lethal. <laughs> this is ridiculous how much damage a wild Wigglytuff is bringing on, and this is something that... Again, in team battle, it's just, you can't skip this out. Sometimes it just works out that way, and bam, you're faced with two health left on the board. Force of Nature is nice, but doesn't cleanly clear out everything on the board. And I think that's a pretty much big game. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, you Force of Nature, you clear a few things, but there are two weapons uh, left over for Wild Wigglytuff, so... Ah. That's going to be plenty of damage for him, and yeah, sometimes as the aggro deck, especially a deck like Aggro Warrior, I think this deck has one of the best net draws in the game. Um, it's one of the more inconsistent decks because you have a lot of weapons, like, see, this hand. <laughs> if this was, like, your starting hand, it would be really bad, but, I mean, he's got plenty of ways to lethal here. <laughs> Considering which one, okay, he's going to go for maximum BM, yeah, Death's yeah. Bite, into Fire War X, maybe. 
<laughs> oh, that's pretty, pretty cool. I actually just gotta go with Arcanite Reaper. Yeah, that, that was an amazing game of face value, and again, Maryville using these aggressive decks to their advantage, gonna be up 2-1 on the series. Yeah, all three of the decks they played tonight have been super aggro. I think maybe Maryville has just decided, you know what guys, if we just play aggro, one of us has to win, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we, We've got to win some of our games at least. I mean, I don't know, they've, they're they 2-0 so far, right? So. Maybe this strategy has been working out for them so far. Maybe they've done the same thing in their other matches. But yeah, I mean, I, I can definitely respect that choice. You play all aggro and just hope it works out. And like, when you think about conquest format, that would not be the choice because you know you do have to play your decks again. But in this format, where you don't have to play the hero again, you don't have to play the classes again. It's it's working up like spades for them and. We'll see if Maryville can actually capture the series win and go stay undefeated. On the other hand, RMU, they used up a uh, Druid off of that one. Hunter and Warrior have been used for RMU. Maryville, they have Mage, Shaman, and Warrior used up for them. So maybe you see some Paladin aggression going off against each other, or maybe we'll see something else coming to play. But we'll see how it works out in the next matchup. Yeah, I was just thinking, when it comes to aggro decks, I mean, I think the king right now is Paladin. Mm -hmm. uh, so if there's anything Maryville's going to play as like their finisher, their you know, their ace in the hole or whatever you'd like to call it, I think Secret Paladin is the way to go because that deck is just so strong right now. Um, you know, I'm excited for Standard when some of those cards are going to rotate <laughs> out. and I mean, it'll probably still be around. Mysterious Challenger's still a powerful card, even mm -hmm. without Avenge, even without some of the other early game stuff. But definitely not as good as it is right now. Right. Uh, I guess depending on what the expansion brings. I mean, are you going to play Eye for Eye now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you still have Noble Sacrifice left uh -huh. over uh, and a couple other things. But, but it's yeah, but yeah that, there's not much of a picking. On the other hand, on the uh, top hand of that too, the Mad Scientist is going to go away with the new standard format. So a lot of things actually kind of set in stone for stability in this well, kind of Hearthstone meta that we're at. It's going to be gone from this new format. So it's going to be a really refreshing feel, right? And it might bring back some um, players. I've been I've been hearing around for the you know Twitch streams and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, it, it's a really exciting challenge coming out for this. Well, technically wild, it's the new format as well, and standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and with that, it looks like the players are in game now. Um, it'll be just a moment before we get spectating on both sides, but uh, yeah, we can spectate uh, from one side for now. All right, hey, Purple Cat is already in. It is Paladin. It is Secret Paladin coming out. Rykon is the... Uh, other person trying to, trying to work it out. His actual name is Nick 123 That's going to be the uh, kind of battle that we're going to see. And hopefully hopefully we can see both hands in just a second. But again, we'll see how Maryville can kind of capture it with more of a standard Warlock. Like a very standard Warlock coming out. Maybe even Reno Warlock, per se. I can do doing some uh, different things coming out for Maryville. On the other hand, Purple Cat. He's just going to wait to play out his thing. So he is going to curve up pretty well. His four turn is going to be a little I bit troublesome. With True Silver Champion and Cockhammer. So we'll see how it kind of works out. But we do see the Dark Peddler going to be developed for Raycon slash uh, VNick123. And I guess we're both back in. Number Dragon, you're good. Yep. Yep. Looks like we got it. We are spectating both sides now. Uh, and yeah, I mean, this looks like Zoo. Maybe Demon Zoo. Uh, but yeah, another aggro deck fits right in. The secret button coming out from RMU um, was interesting. I would have thought that uh, Maryville would have brought it out here, but I guess they're saving it just in case they need it for that game five. They've got Zoo uh, to try and close it out here. Or maybe they wanted this matchup. Maybe they wanted to play the Zoo into the secret Paladin. Um, because I would also say when you're down two games, it's probably mm -hmm. time to bring out the Secret Paladin. You know, mm -hmm. just just get it out there and see if you can get a, a win with it. I mean, they wanted to try to stabilize a Druid where they have, like, you know, decent win rates all around except for that Beast Warrior that just comes out of blue. So, uh, yeah, RMU is going to try to try to blue or stay tried in blue. 
with the Super Paladin. Hopefully it went out for them because they need one more game to tie up the series. On the other hand, Maryville University with this hand right now doesn't look like the best at the moment, but it could develop into something better. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you could do something cheeky like Nerubian Egg, Power of a Woman it, and play the Void Walker. That way you have a 4 4 behind a 1 3 taunt. Mm -hmm. uh, you could also just Implosion. It's not going to be the best, especially if it's a 2. Uh, you could tap in Void Walker, but that's a pretty weak turn. I. I think just playing Implosion or Nerubian Egg with a Power Overwhelming. I mean, you've got two Power Overwhelmings, um, even though it's not the best, but it goes with the Implosion, hits a three. All right, all right, could have been worse. Um, if it was a four Implosion, it'd actually be pretty solid mm -hmm. because, you know, four M's versus two Spiders, not too four bad. Four plus two equals one, as Mars <laughs> Math would say, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, something like that. It's unfortunate, Purple Cat didn't actually have a really good hand to start out with, but drawing out the shooting minibot, it's an amazing curve yet again, and Board Diamond is still going to be in the way. Purple Cat, probably going to save the two solo? Yeah, I'll save that one for another victim. Yep, uh, Shield and Minibot, always a, a solid minion to have out at some point in the early game. The second implosion drawn, though, leads to a nice turn here. For Venick, uh, he can also play the Void Walker. Yeah, I would develop that just to kind of protect everything Why on the board. And uh, yeah, both turns have kind of been back and forth. Purple Cat still does have Doctor Six slash the Mysterious Challenger, so it's still a little bit iffy on him. But he also has a Ragnaros on top of that. So interesting, I guess not interesting tech, but somewhat interesting tech coming out from um. Uh, purple cat. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Um, yeah, I also, you know, like with Ragnaros, I, I like that in this deck because uh, as an aggro deck, you like to have something to finish them off late game. Like, mm -hmm. Ragnaros is good because it's a big monster and it does 8 damage straight up when it enters the battlefield. So, a lot of the time, you'll get a 1 out of 3, 1 out of 4, 1 out of 5 chance, you know, like what have you, to just end the game on the turn you play the Ragnaros. Uh, sometimes it's a 50-50 as well, depending on how things have been going. Mortal Coil is an interesting choice here from Beanick. Don't see that too often, uh, as well as Argent Squire. But, um, yeah, not the most impressive board, as uh, just a Nerubian Egg will be sitting around here. We also get to develop a Secret Keeper coming off the Purple Cat, so it's been pretty good for the next few parts. Raycon slash Beanick, one, two, three. Right now, I could develop Dr. Boom, and that's always good. Always st strong and standard. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know where he's going to really fall up from there. So it's going to be a little bit tough coming out from the Warlock player uh, after the Dr. Boom turn, as everything doesn't really seem to synergize to try to finish up this board right now. Yeah, but it is I mean, Dr. Boom. Sorry. That, that, that's a big thing, though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say it's. Somewhat unfortunate for Purple Cat that he doesn't have a Mysterious Challenger or his own Dr. Boom at this point because uh, his opponent's Dr. Boom is a lot to handle right now. Uh, he can't really deal with it. If it was his Ragnaros turn, he would have a chance to just kill it off, but since it's not, he's going to have to decide between these other options on what he wants to do about it. Go ahead and take out some of these Boom Bots, uh, and neither of them kill... A minion, I mean, those weren't that great, those those two boom bots, I'd say those were pretty low quality. One of them hit the face for four, but your opponent's still at 25, that's not really what you want. You'd rather have the board control at this point. Yep, mm. and uh, we'll see how it kind of develops. We did see the Kakamai go down onto the power spreader, so that's a really good protection for now. But there is still a lot of bursts coming out from uh, our Warlock player, Vnick123, as Maryville Still look the charge, still be aggressive yeah. into this whole matchup. Yeah, I mean, those cards definitely fit the theme for, for tonight for Maryville. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I was thinking this was more of a standard Same zoo deck, but with awesome. two power bloomings, Argent Horse Strider and Arcane Golem, mm -hmm. I can see it's a little more burst oriented. Uh, they probably got the two standard Doom Guards as well in there somewhere. Second Mortal Coil, okay, so they just want a lot of cycling. Maybe they've got a Faceless Manipulator in here somewhere that can potentially copy uh, a Power Overwhelming Arcane Golem 
So, so you can have two of them. Lots of burst damage off of that. Do you see the power of leveling? I should have down, so the second one is going to be down for uh, Warlock player. We'll see how kind of wants to deal with everything on the board. That's going to use the motor for some cycling. I mean, and maybe that, good. Maybe a bit out of order there. Uh, would have liked to see the Mortal Coil first whenever you're going to play it, but yeah, it still worked out and the Doom Guard was drawn. Truthfully, I kind of would have used the Mortal Coil onto the shield of uh, Palio Shredder just to get Put down the board the clearing yeah. kind of aspect, but kind of worked out the same way. Although, if it was a Doom Guard, you would be totally screwed. So, Purple Cat is going to be able to trade out to the Stock Boom efficiently as well. So, really good. Stuff coming up from Purple Cat. Dodging out one of the bigger minions. And getting a little Murloc on the return of the ball. Yeah, that's that's not too bad. I mean, you can take out this 4-4 between the the Bluegill and the weapon. And you got Tyrion Forge Ring to protect you, as well as a Ragnaros follow-up. Uh, I'd say this game is pretty close right now, a little bit in favor of Purple Cat, because he's got these two massive minions that are going to be really difficult for Venic to deal with. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, and there's a, a Leroy. I mean, I wonder if all of their decks had Leroy in there somewhere, and we just hadn't seen him yet, but being drawn now, there's probably a Faceless Manipulator in here, too. I mean, there's got to be, right? With... Yeah, <laughs> double power over Wolmy and Dune Guards and Arcane Golems, yeah. I think it's yeah. two Arcane Golems, maybe, as well. I just want to, you know, I the caveat of this all, we don't get to see the uh, deck names. I'm pretty sure there's, like, Leroy just written everywhere, or... <laughs> Face must go face for everything Maryville is going right now. Yeah, but, all the all the different decks could just be called Leroy Jenkins or like in all caps Leroy, you know, something like there's that. There's like a there's like a exclamation point to kind of differentiate. Oh, this one has Arkham Golem, this one doesn't have Arkham Golem. Yeah, I, I can see that. But would you see the clear coming out for uh, Raycon slash V Nick one two three? How's the creeper going to be developed as well as Naruby Egg? Wow, mm -hmm. there's a lot of burst damage about to come out coming out from this warlord. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, if there's any board you want against a Ragnaros, it's a board like this where, okay, like, you're going to kill my minions, that's fine. I mean, kill my Nerubian Egg, kill my Haunted Creeper, whatever. Um, you can't even use the Ashbringer to clear the 4-4 four -four if Ragnaros hits it because it's end of turn, so. At some, oh, sorry. At some point, we're going to have to actually go right to the base, and this time is now. Paladin has to try to go for that. And oh, the base Ragnarino is going to be Ragnaros there as well. is, Yeah, Ragnaros is on with this plan. He's like, all right, let's go face. Uh, just ignores the minions. That was a one out of four shot. Uh, hmm, I mean, what do you do here as Venic now? You've got the choice between Malganus or Leroy and Doomguard. So many if you just play the Malganus, it could get shot by Ragnaros, but that's better than you dying to Ragnaros. So, all right. I like this choice. Um, this might force Purple Cat into killing off the Malganus by using his weapon and his shielded mini bot. Mm -hmm. uh, then he doesn't get a chance at lethal, but I don't really see a way around this for him. If only Ragnaros could actually go face with Busted Cake. It's a good workout, but there's yeah. a chance to help out. Yeah, if Ragnaros would deal 12 damage instead of 8. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what uh, Purple Cat's going to have to do. He's going to go for the trade, obviously, and this is actually troublesome because I think Maryville wins yeah, this is 10 times the one right now. It's a lot of damage. Um, yeah, and Purple Cat can't even go for the lethal. It's one damage off, even if Ragnaros hits face again. But, all right, it's the Haunted Creeper. But man, you just wonder, just in case that Ragnaros hit phase twice, I wonder if there's any point in the game where Purple Cat missed one damage. Um, I don't really think so. I don't think so either. Yeah, yeah that is going to be the win now for Venic, and that's going to be a 3-1 win for Maryville. Uh, the aggro decks just, just coming out tonight and doing a lot of work for them. Uh, that's the first Leroy finish I think we saw. But, yeah, first a lot in... Of probably the only one we'll see this whole season maybe? <laughs> yeah i mean i've seen some streamers playing leroy decks lately maybe it's starting it. to trend a little more as standard is about to be uh rotating in mm -hmm. uh, leroy will still be available i think but mm -hmm. uh 
But yeah, interesting stuff there. Very interesting deck choices, and while well, Maryville kind of outgamed the opponents today, as they do go on to that three to one victory for RMU. So Maryville, congrats to you guys winning out your matchup, going three zero for the week or three zero now to one for RMU. Uh, we're about to get our second metric, about to start it up. Let me switch up the graphic right quick. Bam. Uh, this is going to be Georgia Tech. We're going to be going against University of Georgia for our second matchup of the CSL Hearthstone. Uh, do we, should we cut to a break for a little bit and then come right back? Yep, yep. We can take a quick break. We'll be right back for match two. Hope you guys are enjoying. Uh, we'll see you in a couple minutes. <laughs> 